Whatever happened to Blackbeard's silver-plated skull? Blackbeard, an infamous pirate from the 1700s, was notoriously an excellent fighter and survivalist. He was so famous, in fact, that after his death his skull was rumored to have been plated in silver and used as a punch bowl for decades. This skull bowl was supposedly passed around from place to place and used for parties, rituals, and even fraternity initiations. But how did this frightening pirate end up as a punch bowl in the first place? After years of being the most fearsome foe across the Atlantic, Blackbeard met with his final fate on Ocracoke Island off the coast of North Carolina. His head was put on a pole and used as a warning to others. It was passed around until its supposed current home in a museum in Massachusetts. Its exact whereabouts throughout the last 300 years are uncertain, though there are many theories. From Teach to Blackbeard, the making of a legendary pirate, originally known as as Englishman Edward Teach, sometimes Thatch, Blackbeard was born around 1680 in Bristol. Unfortunately, not much is known about his young life. It is widely believed that he was educated early in life and that he had started his time on the sea as a sailor on a merchant vessel around Jamaica. At some point in the early 1700s, he decided to use his sailing and fighting skills to participate in the War of the Spanish Succession. Fighting for the British government, he fought Spanish ships in the West Indies to preserve their balance of power. After the war, famous English pirate Benjamin Hornigold took an interest in Teach and let him join his crew. Hornigold typically operated his piracy out of New Providence, which was known as a famous safe haven for pirates. In 1716, Hornigold put Teach in command of a sloop, sailboat, he had recently captured. After preparing for nearly a year, Hornigold and Teach both set out from the safety of New Providence to find other ships and goods to capture. They were quickly successful, capturing several ships containing cargo, such as flour and wine, within a few months. Teach was so successful in his piracy that he quickly caught the eye of other crews. That same year, Teach and Hornigold met Steed Bonnet, who had become a pirate a few months earlier. Bonnet confided in them that his 70-member crew was not happy with his command, and decided to let Teach take over his crew as captain of revenge. At this point, Teach and Hornigold traveled with all three ships as part of their fleet, and even added a fourth vessel just a few months later. It is interesting to note that there is little to no record of Teach or Hornigold engaging in violence when capturing these ships. Hornigold is reported to have only attacked old enemies that attacked him first, while there is no record of violence in relation to Teach at all. Unfortunately, Hornigold's crews were not happy with his lack of violence, demoting him by the end of 1717. He took his original sloop and one other, leaving Teach with the other two. Teach and Hornigold never met again. After parting ways, Teach quickly attacked a French vessel near St. Vincent. This ship, called the Concorde, was renamed Queen Anne's Revenge and became Teach's flagship vessel. The ship was equipped with 40 guns and a crew of over 300 men, and easily helped Teach take over a number of other ships. He used this ship for about a year before it was damaged beyond repair due to a sandbar off the coast of North Carolina, where it was left to sink. Teach used his remaining ships to continue capturing and looting other ships. It is around this time that writers began to make note of his daunting physical appearance. They describe his long black beard that seemed to cover his entire face and how he cared for it by braiding it and twisting it with ribbons around his face. Many historians believe that Blackbeard's reputation as being ruthless and frightening is based on perception rather than actual evidence. There is currently no evidence that indicates that Blackbeard ever actually killed anyone. It is more likely that he used his powerful ships and physical appearance to intimidate others, which gave him his reputation as a vicious pirate.